collaboration is particularly effective for children with multiple and complex needs. So there's some of the research that indicates that it may not be as effective with very healthy, well-adjusted children, but it's particularly effective and needed with children with those multiple complex needs. So then you've got a picture of a, a young girl who reminds me a lot of a client that I worked with called Jenny. Jenny I started working with in year five and she had intellectual disability, mild intellectual disability, but most of the reason why she was being called on to have attention from what, where I then worked in the behaviour intervention support team was her irritating, annoying behaviours with other children in the classroom. And often the school would be moving her from class to class to share her irritation around a little bit so that the yeah, um, young people weren't complaining all the time. So Jenny I actually worked with until she was into secondary school, so she's another example of that transition between traumatised children in the middle years. But particularly she presented as someone who often would fall through the cracks. And that's the topic of our next slide here. Often there would be agencies who would actually have recreation programs, for instance, and they would say, look, this is for eight to 11 year olds or 10 to 14 year olds. But whenever Jenny applications were made for Jenny to participate, it was no, she doesn't quite fit. She's not quite of this category or that category. And I know some of you might I think of other children that are that way as well, as well as young people, they seem to slip through different service systems. So later on that came to be the case with where she lived as well. She was too old for a particular foster care agency, but too young for other residential care agencies. So it's a typical example of how Jenny didn't seem to fit Many situations meant that those tight criteria meant that she was excluded and that made her feel more and more of an outsider and really, really exacerbated her negative behaviour. So one of the very important things we found is how do we go about with collaboration? We can talk about how nice collaboration is, but what do we actually do when we collaborate? We actually learn from each other by getting together. And obviously at the moment we can't get together in very close proximity like this picture shows, but this is an Aboriginal women's yarning circle who were collaborating particularly around the care and transition of students from secondary school into the tertiary sector. So that older group of students and adolescents that you may be working with. So you'll see there the second lady from the right is my close colleague Rose Gilby who I'll talk about a little bit later but she's actually put in place many of the traditional Indigenous means of communication that help with collaboration. I've actually added some of the articles around collaboration in the Indigenous settings from different countries into your resource. So the Dawn Basarab and Bridget Nagandu, yarning about yarning article in 2010 is one example there. And there's also uh, the last example on your resource list, the Melissa Walker, Bronwyn Fredericks, Lindley Mills and Deborah Anderson reference in 2014, yarning as a method of community-based health research that has a lot from the Western Australian background there. So have a look at those articles if you're interested. But what we know is collaboration helps to really actually increase the use of service. It actually helps to have access to services so that people like Jenny don't fall through the cracks, that there's not the excuses to exclude her. And it helps to have a very holistic service provision. So those ladies around the table were responsible for different aspects of the community services and they could actually say, well look, actually my service might be able to do this or look, what about your service? Could they do that? So it actually helps to give very concise, consistent information and helps the child or young person and their family be heard, which is one of the very important aspects that McDonald and Rosier article that you'll see there talked about, the interagency collaboration under the Australian Family Relationships Clearing House. So you can see there 
they all have smiles on their face. That's because things have actually been going very well. At the first days, it took a little while for the agencies to, to actually learn to work together. They've been traditional family divisions, etc. And I'm going to just take a moment now to ask you what collaboration have you needed to do since COVID-19 affected Australia?